Hello guys, this is Engineer Leo Ramos of College of Engineering and Computer Technology of Westland University, Philippines. Today, we're going to discuss a series of communication systems, laboratories, and experiments. Okay guys, for the first experiment in communication system, we're going to discuss and show the behavior of the analog carrier frequency and the modulating frequency. So these two frequencies needed in the process of modulation. That is another series of laboratory experiment. This is the typical setup for this experiment. So we need here again our dual scope and our De Lorenzo trainer which is the DL3155M60 or the analog signal transmission module. On this experiment we're going to utilize part of this module that is the F modules as you can see here. So the F modules under analog transmission module is our tone generator which is representing your modulating signal or the information and we're going to utilize also the module M. So the module M represents your carrier generator or the high frequency signal that is used in modulation process later on. And first, we're going to discuss the behavior of our modulating signal. With the use of the free calibrated oscilloscope that I taught you last time, we're going to use it again on this particular experiment. Okay, I will use the channel 1 in order to view the modulating signal frequency and in order to do that you can see there is this output port here and the ground port here so the channel 1 of your oscilloscope must be put in this output of the module F and the ground of this oscilloscope must be put on the ground of these modules Using our oscilloscope, we're going to check the frequency and the amplitude of our modulating signals or the low frequency signals. Using our auto set button on this portion, we can see the waveform of our modulating signal. Amazing! Okay, so as you can see here, this is our signals. So because there is no signal that is being detected in channel 2, so we can off the channel 2. Okay, and put the measures here. So this is our signals. On our oscilloscope, it measures 5.12 kilohertz with amplitude of 7.89 volts. So on this experiment, we can uh, change the frequency and also the amplitude of our signals. So, we go back again here on this particular module. We're going to perform that changing in the frequency and changing the amplitude. So you have here and up, that is your R4 and your R5. So, R4 is responsible for changing the frequency of our modulating signals or the low frequency signals and the R5 is responsible for changing the output voltage of our signals. Okay, so let's check what will happen if we change the position of our R4 now. In this case, I will uh, make a clockwise movement on this R4 modules and observe what will happen here in the oscilloscope. 
So we should expect that the frequency will increase. That is from 5.14 kilohertz. It might increase to some extent. Okay. So, uh, so the frequency now is, as you can see, that is 6.61 kilohertz. So in this experiment, changing the position of our R4 will change the frequency. Clockwise movement will increase the frequency and counterclockwise movement will decrease the frequency. So let us see. Amazing! I will make a counterclockwise movement. So our oscilloscope now reads 6.62. So we should expect that the frequency will decrease when I turn this knob into a counterclockwise movement. Okay, so this is what happened if you perform a counterclockwise. So there is now only 4.68 kilohertz, but the, the amplitude is the same. Okay, so as I've said a while ago, that we can change also the voltage. So in order to do that, again, let us see the module F here. So under R5 knob. That is same principle with our R4 knob. Making a clockwise movement will increase now the voltage of our signals. Making our uh, performing a counterclockwise movement will uh, decrease the signal level of our signals. Okay, and let's do that and let us show if that would happen. So let's check first these signals. Right now we have here an 8 volt signals. So if I make a clockwise movement on R5 knob, like on this case, that 8 volt signals will increase as expected. Okay, making now our signals to be 9 point or 8.95 volts. So it increases when you uh, turn on the knob clockwise in the R5. Likewise, if I turn the knob counterclockwise movement, like on this case, so our 9 volt signals will decrease. Okay, let us see. I will now turn the R5 knob uh, into a counterclockwise movement, and as you can see, that the amplitude of the signals decreases. And now it reads 6.10 volts. Amazing! So that is how we're going to manipulate the required frequency and the required voltage of the analog in, uh, information, be it a uh, modulating signal or be it a carrier. For more videos regarding communication system, please like, share, and subscribe this channel.